I'm Don here in Florida, and today I want to talk about Star Trek, and I'm talking about the original series with William Shatner. I remember as a kid waiting through either Marlon Perkins' Wild Kingdom or Lawrence Welk show, depending on what time of the year it was, uh, to get to the Star Trek episodes on my grandfather's TV. <laughs> but one of my favorite episodes was the one where they couldn't see the people on the ship, uh, but they did hear like this little mosquito, or Spock heard this little mosquito sound all the time. And what it was was the people that were on the ship were living or operating at a different frequency. They they were a much higher frequency than human beings, so they moved much faster. You couldn't see them, and when they talked or made sounds, it came off as that mosquito sound. And eventually Spock figured that out and slowed down the mosquito sound to where he could actually hear voices. And I bring this all up because sometimes we go by what we see and know rather than what's actually going on. And for example, with the Star Trek episode, things happen at a different frequency. Well, this is true in real life too. When you're working on your lathe or your milling machine, for example, uh, you can do things, but other things will be happening that you don't see. And, and normally we associate this with uh, chirping or chatter in the machine. But if you put your lathe or your mach milling machine uh, under a strobe light or a high-speed camera, you could see a lot of different things happening. You could see things like moving of the tool or moving of the metal uh, under the strobe or, or under the high speed. So, and this is all happening at a much different frequency that we can see with the human eye. Uh, to give you an example of this, we're talking about lathes now. I'm going to stick with the lathe for right now. When you have a tool, and say this is your tool post coming up, and your tool sitting out here, when the metal is coming by that tool post, this can be happening, okay? And this is a vibration that you may not be able to see, but you may be able to hear in the form of chatter. And when your tool is stuck out pretty far like that, it, it will cause this movement. And, you know, in a lot of cases, it just doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's going to do what it has to do depending on the uh, material that you're cutting and the speed that you're cutting and the feed that you're cutting at. But it can be a bother and it can actually take some of the accuracy out of the work you're doing. Uh, if you shorten up that tool or bring that tool closer, and this is the tool post sticking straight up like this, this is the center point of where that tool would come off of, and shorten it up, you can see there's still vibration okay but it, it's at such a high frequency now that it's not going to bother and we call this or we think of this as rigidity in the tool so trying to get maximum rigidity in the tool is important and usually what we have if you look at your tool like this normally the tool does not come off the post straight it usually comes off say on your quick change tool post at this angle and then changes out to this angle so you're actually going at, at two different angles which increases the problem even more severely so today what we're going to try to do is change up the position of our tool by eliminating our compound rest and why the compound rest well everybody knows that the compound rest is the real weak point on your lathe let's go over here and look at that Okay, so we know that the compound rest is the weak point in the system simply because it's split and it has to be tightened with gibbs. That makes for one weak point, plus we're sitting on a T-nut, which in its own right isn't an issue. And then, of course, we're bolted down down here. So where we really have an issue with the compound is this, though. The true center line of this tool is actually back here. But notice where... The center line of the tool post is it's forward of that by about a good inch and with approximately two and a half inches from here to here that we rest on moving this out quite significantly from the center line of the mount and this is important because like i just said we only have about two and a half inches that we're resting on and this center point is really the center of our universe if you took a freight train and placed it on end straight up and down like this 
that post would support it. Now, as soon as you move out like this and put that freight train out here, it's gonna break everything. So this is kind of important to remember. And you may think I'm exaggerating, but have you ever seen pictures of like a, like a pencil or a piece of hay or wheat going through, the, through a telephone pole after a tornado? If you get something straight enough, it will push through. And whereas this is our center point, that's our strongest point. As we move out, okay, and move off like this, we're leveraging against that center point all the time. So what we really want to do is we want to bring this point here as close to that as possible. Now we could do that by backing up the compound rest. We could bring this tool way back, okay? But as we bring it back, closer to the center point, all we're doing is weakening this area here on the compound rest. We're making it much harder for it to support that leveraging. Plus we're opening it up here. So that's really not a good idea. I mean, you can do it, but that's really not the way to, to get the stiffness that we need. So eliminating the compound rest, although it would not allow you to uh, do threading immediately or or to make angles and things like this readily, uh, it doesn't mean we're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna eliminate it for general use, but we can always bring it back. Uh, and I think this is probably a great idea because we don't always use the compound rest. I mean, I like having it there. I use it quite often. But by putting a compound rest eliminate in here, we can move all this tooling much further back and stiffen this up. And really in the end, what we have to look at is that it's just another tool in our toolbox, something else we can use to do better work. So let's take a look at this. Right now, this, just eyeballing it, the tip of that tool is off approximately four inches from the center of this, but this is also off by about an inch from the center of the mount. So we're talking about five inches out from the center. And, and although this is fairly rigid, it's not ideal. So let's go ahead and tear this down. So we're going to take this off and we're going to take this out. And now, as you can see, this is where we want to mount to. And as I said before, this mounting point is only about, well, it's, it's bigger than two and a half inches. It's about three inches out here to here. Okay. And that's the center. So still any hangout past this point is what we're trying to eliminate by bringing that tool back in. If we can get it back into here, okay, say two inches out from that center point, we're doing really well because then we have ideal support. So uh, some of the mini lathes, if you've watched on uh, YouTube now and then, you'll see a uh, compound eliminate. Some of the mini lathes, the cross slide is actually a block that sits right down like this straight across and it, it's all sort of like uh, built to put your tool on with uh, T-nuts and it slides like this. Those actually allow for one solid block to be mounted on there and then your tool just to go straight on top. But uh, these Atlas lays and, and the uh, South Bends, for example, they don't have that option. You, you're basically dealing with this point right here. So the one solid block thing isn't really gonna work for us. Anything larger than three inches isn't doing us absolutely any good. As a matter of fact, anything larger than three inches is gonna trick us into believing that we have rigidity out at this point because once you go beyond that point out here, okay, now you're working against yourself. So let's go back on over to the bench. Okay, back here on the bench, I have a nice piece of uh, three inch that we can work with. And if we put the uh, rest up here, oh, let me take that T-nut off of there. If we put this up on here, and we believe that centering this right in the middle of our stock here is a good idea. Think again, because we're still sitting from the center of this stock to that tip right there at about three and three quarters inches. If we offset this, if we move it back like this, so we're not on center at this point, okay, and drill our hole here, we move our tip, or we move the end of our tool from here back to about, uh, to the center line, about just under three inches, okay? 
And these are, are taken from this tool. If you put in a, a different tool that's shorter, of course, you're, you're gonna move it back even more. So really where we wanna mount this isn't dead center to this, but off at this side like this. So and that support puts a lot of support for the tool right at that point. And actually, if your center point's here and the tool is working, it has to create a leverage over like this, which isn't gonna happen. So it really increases the, the uh, stiffness of this. If we move it out like this to the center point, notice that the tool is now outboard at this point. So, and again, now we don't have that leverage over point. We're actually pulling from the center. So I, I think we're gonna go, no, I know we're gonna go with an offset like this. So let's go over in the lathe and get this started and uh, see what we can do. I have a piece of three inch. We're gonna go ahead and drill this and then open it up. Okay, so now we're gonna cut that off. Let's see how much we have to cut. Just shy of two and a half. So let's go set that up. Okay, so now what we have here is a nice block to go and work with. And it's the same height as our compound here where this would sit. So we're gonna move it over to there. And like I said, the tool, the closer it can get to that center point, the better for us. So we're gonna move this off like this to where these edges are flush at this point and this point. And we'll call that good and close enough. This overhang doesn't matter whatsoever because the center now is right here. And this is gonna be behind the center. So this would have to cant over that point. So actually being behind the center with the bolt gives us more rigidity. And we've moved the tool much, much, much closer to the center point here. So we're gonna line that up like that, okay? And that gives us a little ledge underneath the tool here in case we wanna put a, a support directly underneath the tool. So let's get down in there with my marker. Looks like the marker is the exact same size as that, so I should have a nice uh, center point there. Bring that up. Yes, sir, right there. We're actually off uh, just over half an inch from center. So that's very nice. So let's go ahead and set that up and a drill and tap for this. We'll use the original bolt, drill and tap for that. And then we'll have to put in our holes for our pins down here. And we'll do that at 120 degrees off. So let's go over in the mill. Okay, so we're set up here for some drill and tapping. I've already marked the line where I want it to drill through and uh, centered everything. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, drill and tap this now. Okay, now from here we can turn it off exactly 
120 degrees. Notice that we're drilling down so that we're coming between the jaws here. Okay, it turns out this bolt is a M14, so we had to drill it metric. And we're getting into my work kit here. I had to run over and get this out of my work box. So we'll go ahead and uh, tap that down now. So for as tight as that fit was, I want to make sure that this is nice and square. So we're not taking any chances on this one that's tapping real nice Okay, so here she is with the post, and this is the quick change, and we'll put that on there and kind of get it zeroed off here, right about there. And I dike them to this all up, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down a little bit so that there's no possible way that this tool post can twist that can be open that can be open like that okay so we're gonna we're gonna mill all this area subsurface and leave this standing right here so we're gonna mill out to this line and to this line here so let's go set that up okay we're all set up here we're, we're zeroed out I've got everything lined up and we're going to bring her up uh, two, two passes of uh, 33 and a half each. We're going to try for 67. So. Okay, time for a rough test fit before I uh, clean it up, just to make sure everything's kosher. There we go, she locks right down in there. She's got, it's only an eighth of an inch, but that's more than enough to, to lock that to keep it from rotating. So I'm pretty happy with that. One, once it gets cleaned up and that nut gets on there, I can feel as I, as I flatten it, as if the nut was flattening it, it just, it locks right up against these sides here. So that'll keep that from trying to dance around so let's go get that cleaned up real quick okay that cleaned up real nice i i just passed a file over it and then i hit it with a scotch bright to take down all the uh the hard corners and it, it feels real nice and i tested this up on there already with the uh bolt that's that locks right in place those those high points right there uh, do not allow this to turn whatsoever it it's locked right on there so I got a good feeling about this I'm gonna go paint it and then we'll put it together and see how it works. okay let's do some assembly here so get this up here and get the pins in place notice that the bevel goes down if you haven't seen my video on the tool post milling attachment you might want to watch that because I show on that video how to make these pins yeah, there's a few other tricks in there that I 
added that you may not have seen in some of the other uh, tool post milling attachments that significantly improve its rigidity. And I'm just using these grub screws for now. Normally I'd probably just put some quick handles on here because this is the only turning point that this is going to be allowed to have once this is together. The uh, tool quick change tool post itself won't be allowed to turn. So we're just going to snug those down right now. Okay. And we'll get our bolt in here. And quick change. There we go. There, solid as a rock. So anyway, if we want to turn this now, we have to loosen this up and then we can turn it. And let's go ahead and uh, align that. There we go. So let's get a tool in there. Okay, so let's check our tool height here real quick. And I already noticed I have a lot more clearance to play with here. And it is a little bit low, which I don't doubt because I went ahead and uh, took an eighth of an inch out of that base so that we'd have a lock down here. Okay, that should just about do it. The one thing for, for certain is that now you have to move the carriage deeper to get into your work, which is fine because it, it pushes that center closer to the center of the work. The more centered you get here and the, the closer that tool is to the center of this point, the more rigid everything is. And on this tool, we've knocked this back and this is just eyeballing it. and. This is the center up here, half just half an inch up. So that's three inches to what did we say? Five inches, four and a half inches. So we've pulled it in quite a bit and brought it much, much closer to our center point here. So let's go ahead and, and try some different metals on this just to see what we got. And this is this is this is some 1018. I have lots of that 1018 laying around for some reason. So let's go ahead and lock that in and see how that does. And we'll stay up close to the chuck on this. Unfortunately, I don't have a high-speed lens that I can do a before and after shot of the movement of this. But just by feel and the years of experience that I've had on this lathe, I know if it's going to be more rigid or not. And I'm expecting it will be. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. My goodness, yeah. Okay, let me uh, let me do it with the uh, drive. I can uh, tell just by sound that the the frequency that you're hearing out of this now is in the workpiece, not in the tool post, which I find amazing. The, the tool post before would uh, absorb that uh, that frequency response and or you get the flexations in the tool post. Um, a deeper cut on the next one here. Even with that, that work sticking out that far, it's, it's just amazing how this is uh, going. And I, I didn't even sharpen this before I started, so I'm pretty, Pretty happy, pretty uh, impressed. All right, let's just shut that down for a second. Oh yeah, the, the finish on it came out really slick too, so. All right, let's try something else. Uh, the 
some drill rod. Drill rod tends to uh, really induce some high frequency into it. So we'll see what it does with this drill rod here. And we're gonna turn it up just a little bit on the speed. Bring it in. Yeah. Again, all the frequencies back in the workpiece. So the closer you got into the get into the chuck, the less response you're gonna have out of that. So that's pretty impressive too. Alright, and again, other than me not pulling the tool back, that was also given a fairly nice uh, cut. So Okay, so I guess that's just about going to do it. Uh, eliminating the compound seems to have really helped out. At least it changed the frequency and took it straight out of the compound and allows us to, to deal with it right at the workpiece, which I think is really beneficial when we're uh, working on the lathe because we can always adjust feeds and speeds better than we can um, try and track down gremlins within our uh, lathe itself. So again, this is just another tool in the toolbox. It doesn't mean I'll use it all the time. But for right now, I'm going to leave it on here. If you follow me on the YouTube here and are watching me work on the lathe, uh, you can pay attention to see how this performs as I uh, cut a few more videos. So I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. And thanks for watching from Florida. Don out.